This story begins about 18 months ago, 20 days after we took office. For 30 days from the end of January 2015 through the end of February, it snowed, nine feet in all. The T stopped running for a week and then staggered forward for the next several months. An expert panel did a quick but thorough review on what happened, and they concluded, and I quote, the catastrophic winter breakdowns were symptomatic of structural problems that require fundamental change in virtually all aspects of the MBTA. Their nine key findings, which were just words on page six of their April 2015 report at the time, have proven to be profoundly prophetic. What they did not say is that the T was underfunded. It wasn't. It isn't. It won't be. What it was was poorly led and horribly managed. There are a lot of terrific people working at the T, but it is still broken. It was still broken. And thankfully, the legislature responded to this crisis by supporting our call for the creation of the Fiscal and Management Control Board and a number of other key operational reforms. They incorporated them into the FY16 budget, which I signed into law in mid-July last year. Here's what we've learned and what we've done since then. The good news? Every day the team manages to safely move over a million riders from where they are to where they need to go, and there's spectacular room for improvement. The bad news? The T was, and still is, in very tough shape. The T's operating expenses had indeed gone up 5% a year for the previous 15 years, far faster than the rate of inflation with virtually no increase in membership ridership over that same period of time. Thankfully, the T flatlined the year-over-year -year growth in its operating budget this past year, delivering FY16 at virtually the same cost as FY15 for the first time in almost 20 years. Second, for years, the T never spent its allocated capital budget. I want you to think about that. All this old infrastructure and the T was never able to spend all the money it had to upgrade it. For the next five years, the T will double the amount of money it spends on signals, switches, tracks, power systems, cabling, trains, and buses. Third, the T's administrative processes are just light years behind the times. The T's history of not managing overtime and unanticipated absences is well known. Now, for the first six months of 2016, operator absenteeism is down by 25 percent, and total overtime expense is down by over 30 percent. Weekday drop bus trips are down by over a third, which means the number of bus trips during the first six months of this year is up by almost 9,500 rides over last year. Fourth, unlike other transit systems in America, the T has never been able to reconcile cash to calculated collections and its money management process contains serious risks. In fact, someone cut sunroofs into two of the armored cars used by the T to transport money. The doors to the money room were rarely locked, no one wore the required uniform, and lunch boxes were never inspected. All of the issues raised by the recent audit that was done are being addressed for the near term. And the T plans to contract this service out to a firm that focuses on moving and managing cash. Fifth, the T's warehouse is a colossal underperformer, delivering parts four or more business days after the order, while other suppliers deliver parts in less than a day. The T plans to put this out to bid soon, thereby duplicating the service model that's used by almost every other public transportation system in the country. Sixth, the T's pension system is in free fall, a $1.5 billion system with a $1 billion shortfall that is losing $90 million a year in assets. We believe the T's pension system cannot survive as a standalone entity, and we are not alone, and we'll be recommending it to be managed by the state's prim system when the legislature returns in January. Seventh, the T lacked many of the basic management reports and daily metrics of operation that would be necessary to determine how the system was doing in meeting the needs and expectations of its ridership. Much work has been done to build daily dashboards and operating metrics for workers, managers, and riders. 
There's far more public information for riders than there used to be, and much more reliable and usable metrics for T staff. And finally, for the first time in a long time, the T is being managed. New leadership is in place, a new general manager, chief administrator, chief operating officer, chief financial officer, and chief procurement officer. There is, for the first time, a chief technology officer. The T is being governed by a board that is not a rubber stamp. In its first year, the FMCB met 52 times and sta staff made 274 presentations. The FMCB conducted its oversight in the glare of the public and media and opened every single meeting with public comment sessions, some of which ran for over an hour. They are without a doubt the five hardest working volunteers in state government, and without them, this past year would not have been possible. The T is also becoming more nimble. On June 24th, a fire on the Longfellow Bridge and a power cable occurred around 2 o'clock in the morning. Had that fire occurred in 2015 instead of 2016, the T would have run buses instead of the red line for the morning rush hour and then acted to repair the damage after the fact. This time, cable repairs began immediately and a bus bridge was put into place. The buses only had to operate from Kendall Square to Park Street because the T had installed relatively simple traction power supply switches which allowed shorter segments of the red line to be shut down at any one time. And the repairs were done so quickly, the entire red line was operational by 6.47 a.m. that morning. Yes? Yes. So what's up for the year forward? Much of it will focus on more of the same, and it should. Aggressive focus on operating expenses and operating performance. The T has to deploy available capital funds and invest in its infrastructure. Bid out the money room in the warehouse to determine if the T can both save money and improve performance. All indications about market standards suggest the answer to both these questions will be yes. Don't be afraid to change how services are delivered and vehicles are maintained. Actively seek out private partners. Even let them make unsolicited proposals to help the T find new and smarter ways to deliver for its riders and its customers. Find some more talented people to manage some of its most critical functions. Improve service in ways the customers can see. There's too much work to be done at the T to expect gigantic service improvements immediately, but there are things the T can be doing every day to improve operating performance and the reliability of its services. Finally, there are many talented, committed, and dedicated people working at the T. They have been badly let down by a culture from the top to the bottom of the organization that's allowed the T to deteriorate operationally and financially over a very long period of time. Climbing out of this mess will take time and a ton of work. I think on that we can all agree. But it will also take a change in attitude at every level throughout the T to be successful. Now, I don't care if a service is provided publicly or privately. What I care about is performance, productivity, and ensuring that the money the riders, the taxpayers, and the cities and towns pay into the system is well spent. The old way of doing things at the T is no longer viable or sensible. Everybody wins if the T delivers a reliable, dependable, affordable service to the region's riders. Everybody wins if the T gets its act together operationally and financially. And everybody wins if the T takes the task of becoming a 21st century transportation system to heart and works hard to learn from each other as well as from its peers. Thanks very much. We're wide open to questions.